All right, so here's your homework on graphing cosine and sine and uh, tangent. I want to graph negative 2 cosine x. The amplitude is the number being multiplied in front, and it's always a positive number. It's the absolute value of it. So the amplitude here is 2. The period would be 2 pi, and it would change if something is multiplying inside or dividing inside the function. It isn't, so it stays at 2 pi. There is no phase shift, and we'll talk about that later. So I have this one, right? But anyways, we start at x equals 0, and understand that cosine starts at the maximum. So with the amplitude of 2, the maximum is 2. Whoa! But cosine is negative. So because we have a negative in front, it reflects it down and starts at negative 2. I need to get my A game on here. All right. Next, I'm going to put down the end of the wave of one cycle. So I'm going to find 2 pi. And it's also going to be the bottom of the wave. And exactly in the middle at pi is going to be the max. That's the pattern for cosine. In the middle will be at 0. And that's one cycle of cosine. We can repeat it. So at negative 2 pi, exactly in the middle, positive 2. And again, in between the minimum and the maximum is the middle of the wave, which is at 0. And that's it. Recognize that I curled the wave up at the end because it's not going to continue to go down. That is the bottom of the wave. So don't make it seem like it would go lower. At this point, it's going to go back up. All right, number two. Amplitude. What number is being multiplied in front? So that's 2.5. Period would be 2 pi, but notice that we have something inside the function that's going to change it. So we do the inverse of what we see. So we're going to divide that by 2. And the period, in this case, is going to be pi. So sine starts in the middle. So I'm going to start at 0 in the middle. I'm going to find pi. That's also in the middle. And then in the middle of those will be a third middle. So middle, middle, middle. I recognize that sine is positive. So in between the first two middle points or midlines, we're going to go to the maximum of this wave, which is at 2.5. So I'm going to find 2.5. And then the next two is going to be the minimum at negative 2.5. And that's the pattern I'm going to follow. I can follow it on both sides, following the pattern. I'm just going one period at a time and then in the middle. Now for this one, between 0 and negative pi over 2, it's going to be a minimum down here, following the pattern. And it's 2 and a half and negative 2 and a half. And make sure when you draw your waves, they're curvy. And they're not like little mountaintops. They don't look like V's. So don't make them look like V's. Make sure they're curvy. Number three. I don't see a number being multiplied in front. So that means the amplitude is 1. The period would be 2 pi. But I'm going to do the inverse of what I see inside. In this case, a fraction means I'm going to do the reciprocal. So times 3 over 2. Notice the 2's divide out and leaves us just with 3 pi. Sine starts in the middle. I need to find 3 pi. I can't find it. 3 pi is off my graph. Half of 3 pi is 1 and a half. So I can find 1 and a half pi. And there would be a third middle that's off my graph. I just need to recognize it with the pattern. For the first two that are in the middle, it's first going to go to the maximum. So what's in between 1 and and one, you could even count the squares of the grids here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in the middle will be three. One, two, three. And in that middle, it's going to go up to one. 
So I know that when I count every three squares, that's going to be a point that I need. So one, two, three, this one's going to go below. So I'm just going to count. One, two, three, that's going to be below. One, two, three, that's in the middle. One, two, three, that's above. All right, number four. <clears throat> What's the amplitude? It's being multiplied by two. What's the period? We start with two pi, and then we undo what's ever inside the function. So in this case, it's a fraction, so times three-eighths. So if I multiply this across, I get six over eight, or three pi over four. Cosine starts at the top or the bottom. In this case, because cosine is positive, we're going to start at positive 2. Then I need to find 3 pi over 4. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 pi over 4 is right there. So if I count 1, 2, 3, that completes one cycle. So notice 1 quarter half, 3 quarters 1. So 4 of these make 1 quarter each. So there it is. That finishes one cycle. In the middle of that will be the bottom of your wave. So exactly in the middle would be actually one and a half boxes right here. Then, following that pattern, in between those would then be in the middle. So that's the pattern we're going to follow. So I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. Then in the middle, go down. In the middle, go down. That's to the right. Here I'm going to go one, two, three. In the middle. One, two, three. In the middle. One, two, three. And then in the middle. So, and I know it's going to be above and below using that. I'm actually just going to worry about the maximums and the minimums. And then I can create my wave from the max and the minimums. Number five, amplitude is positive three, so it's the absolute value of that. The period would be two pi, but times the, what undoes that? Three over four. So this is six over four, or three pi over two. Sine starts in the middle, so I'm going to start in the middle. I need to find three pi over two. That's one and a half, so there it is. One and a half, one pi, two pi, one and a half. In the middle, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So three is then going to be either the top. It's also going to be in the middle. There it is, sorry. So sine starts with middle, middle, middle. Now, because sine is negative, in between the first two middle, it's actually going to go low. So find where that is, and it's going to go to the minimum. Then it's going to go to the maximum. So that completes one cycle. So notice the negative makes it go down, and then it goes to the maximum. So we're going to follow that pattern. So I'm counting. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. So for here, it's going to go to the maximum. And then here, it's going to go to the minimum, following the pattern. And then once you have that, make your wave. Make sure you put arrows at the ends that shows it goes on forever. Number six. And again, feel free to press pause and try it, or you can just practice with me. Um, the amplitude is one, because that's what's being multiplied in front. The period would be two pi. To undo the multiplying, you divide by two, and that leaves me just with pi. So cosine starts at the top or bottom. In this case, cosine is positive, so it starts at the top, which is at 1. Then I'm going to find pi. That's also that, and that completes one cycle. In the middle of that will be at negative 1. And in the middle of those will be the middle of the wave. That's the pattern. I'm just going to follow over and over again.
And then once you have the points, make your wave. All right, turn the page. <clears throat> What's the amplitude? It's a positive answer. I like writing as a decimal because I think it's easier to understand. So this is positive three and a half, seven divided by two. The period would be two pi, but how do I undo one half? Is I multiply it times two, so it's four pi. Cosine starts at the top or bottom. In this case, because cosine is negative, it's gonna start at the bottom of the wave. Then I'm gonna go to four pi, and I realize I can't get to four pi. It's not on my graph. So half of 4 pi would be 2 pi, and 2 pi would actually be at the top of my wave. Oh yeah, three and a half. Now, in between that, so the exact middle between that, which is pi, it's gonna be the middle of my wave, and I'm gonna follow that pattern. And that's as much of the wave I can see with this scale. Number eight. Here we have an amplitude of one half, really tiny, and four x, so two pi divided by four undoes it, so it's pi over two. So sine starts in the middle, pi over two is in the middle between zero and pi. So I'm gonna follow that pattern and understand that's all gonna be in the middle. So here's the middle, middle, and again, in the middle. So every single intercept there that you see on there is gonna be in the middle. Now, in between the first two middles, it's going to the maximum, which is a half, down to the minimum. So you can see with the pattern that it's creating and the cute little wave, right, that's happening because of it. Notice how these numbers change the look of the wave. So with an amplitude of one half, it's really quiet. And with a period of pi over two, it's going quite quickly. It, it takes a short amount of time to complete one cycle. In number seven, it took a long time to complete a cycle. All right, number nine, these are now tangent. So tangent doesn't have an amplitude. The word amplitude is only to do with a wave, which is sine and cosine. But it does have a period, and the normal period for tangent is pi. There's nothing inside the tangent that would change it, so it's gonna stay pi. So how does tangent uh, begin and how does it start? So it starts in the middle with a point of inflection. And at pi will also be a point of inflection, so every pi will be a point of inflection. And then in between those will be asymptotes. So between zero and pi is an asymptote. That's the pattern over and over again. And then what does the picture look like? So for every point of inflection, it's gonna go up to the right and down to the left, up to the right, and down to the left. The two in front just makes it look a little skinnier, but in terms of the sketch of the graph, this is what the picture looks like. Number 10. Try this one. We can make it a little more accurate here. So uh, we don't have an amplitude. The period's pi, but the one third. How do I undo it? Is multiply it times three. 
so tangent starts with a point of inflection, and then at 3 pi, which I can't see, would be the other point of inflection, every 3 pi. So half of 3 pi is 1 and a half. So at 1 and a half, this one's no good either. All my red pens, maybe this red pen will work. At 1 and a half, we have an asymptote. In this direction, at negative 1 and a half, we have an asymptote. Now normally, in between those two, you'd have a point at positive 1. That's at that 45 degree. But when you multiply it times 3, it's not going to be positive 1 in between here. It's going to be positive 3. So exactly in the middle between these, at positive 3. And then exactly in the middle here, but at negative 3. And it goes up to the right, and it goes down to the left. Up here at 3, here at negative 3. The pattern. All right, let's try again. Amplitude doesn't have it, period. Notice we're going to divide it by 2. So at pi over 2, it ends the cycle. And in the middle between the two would be the asymptote. And that's the pattern we're going to follow. So you have your point of inflection, and then in between the point of inflection are asymptotes. Now, in between the point and the point of inflection, because of the negative, it doesn't go to positive one, it goes to negative one in the middle. But on the other side, it would go to positive 1. So this one's going to go down to the right and up to the left. Again, it's going to go to negative 1 on one side and positive 1 on the other side. So that negative in front changes the direction of the curve. And once you see the pattern, it just repeats over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. All right. Number 12. Last one. Again, there's no amplitude. It would be pi. To undo one half, it's times 2. So it's 2 pi. Again, in the middle is an asymptote. In the middle of those two, so in the exact middle, between the point of inflection and the asymptote, this says that it's going to go to negative one and a half. So in the exact middle, it's going to go to negative one and a half, and then in the exact middle, it's going to go to positive one and a half. And that's what creates that goes down in one direction and it goes up in the other direction. So exactly in the middle, in this case, it goes up to uh, one and a half. here in the exact middle, down to one and a half. And then you finish the pattern. All right, you did it. Graphing, sine, cosine, and tangent. Good job. Mr. G Math, over and out.